welcome to Academy. Uh, we're uh, here I'm doing a um, presentation around how we do things around testing, how we want to go about testing. One thing is that you may well be aware is that software has bugs, and there's bugs in all the place, uh, and there's obviously bugs in KDE applications, in KDE Plasma. Um, and one way to find uh, those bugs and squash them is to do some automated testing, which is what Harold was doing was explaining and, and uh, working on in the previous transition that happened right before this one. Uh, one other way to make uh, bugs go away and find them is to uh, ask for people to test the software that we produce and to make this uh, as easy as possible. One thing is that we're probably, uh, a lot of people here are developers, are KDE developers, but we're always the users of, of someone else's developer, essentially. We don't necessarily work on the whole KDE software stack. We don't work on everything. And so sometimes you may be testing an application from another project, and you may not be uh, aware or able to uh, test this application or compile this application yourself, and you want to have something easier to test it than having to dwell completely into the source code, etc. So that's what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about testing. How when do we want to do testing? How do we want to do testing? How do we enable people to do testing uh, in much easier fashion? Uh, we'll look at two things, uh, two ways we, we've been working on to make that much better uh, for users to test all applications or software. So one is uh, using flat packs, uh, and all the work we've been doing uh, either in FlatHub and it, uh, directly in GitLab CI on invent.tv.org. And the other one is how we uh, testing for uh, GTE Plasma, uh, for GTE Plasma, the, the whole desktop, uh, and how we can do that using Fedora Keynote directly. And finally, at the end, we'll take a short key tool to what we can do for Plasma 6 and how we're uh, trying to do things there and prove the, uh, the status quo. All right, so let's go. So, as I said, uh, testing. What do we want to do for testing and when, how, um, how, what makes testing actually efficient? So the, the, the main goal uh, here of testing is that we want to enable everybody to be able to test changes going into a KDE software. So we don't want to get testing to only reserved to non to developers, to like actual developers of the application that are able to compile, set up an environment, etc. That's usually that's too much work, and that's something that uh, we cannot ask our users to. And as I said before, like we're all users. I'm a huge uses of KDE software, and so uh, whether or not I'm a developer for a specific KDE application or not, it's always interesting for me to be able to test another application uh, without having to install everything, set up the whole environment, the whole libraries. If we want users to test our application, it has to be reasonably safe for them to do it. So it has to be safe regarding their data, there has to be guarantees for them that they're not going to lose everything, uh, that is going to be reasonably self if the test change, that it's not going to blow up your the whole system, it's not going to create uh, dependency issues, uh, conflicts, etc., etc. And at the same time, it has to be, if the users have to be able to go back to a state where, okay, they've, they've tested your fix, they've tested a piece of unstable software with the potential fix inside of it, and they want to be able to go back to a state where they own the server versions of the application again, and they can keep working uh, while waiting for the fix to land in either an upstream release or an official start of release. With all that, uh, we want users to also be able to do the testing as soon as possible. So ideally, uh, we would test every single changes before they are committed. So uh, if a user report an issue, we would make sure that we create a uh, find the fix, and before the fix is committed into a repo, it is pushed to the users in some form so that they're able to test it and verify that the fix actually fixes thing. Sometimes it's hard to do, and we'll see here uh, for large projects that have a lot of dependencies, uh, such as the Plasma desktop, sometimes it's, it's really hard to do that, so we'll see uh, how we can do that right after. So we make a fix, we believe it's the right, correct, the right fix, we commit this into a repo, and we try and make sure that as soon as possible after that happens, uh, we make the software available to users so that they can try it and validate, confirm that the fix is actually correct. So let's start with KDE applications and how we can do that with KDE applications. And 
we enabling we are enabling that to happen uh, thanks to Flatpak. So the KDE apps right now, we most of the KDE uh, applications, uh, we uh, we have been integrating them uh, as Flatpaks and publishing them on Flathub. So Flatpak, in short, is a distribution independent packaging format and delivery format, so that you can uh, package applications and deliver to other to users to some places. And Flathub is the de facto uh, distribution independent publishing platform for Flatpaks. So anybody is uh, anybody can make a flat pack from from a KDE application, publish it anywhere. Uh, but uh, one of the options, one of the major options that we have right now is FlatHub, which makes it really easy to find a lot of uh, applications, and especially all the KDE applications. Uh, so we're now publishing most of those applications, all of those KDE applications on FlatHub, and they track the latest stable releases. So uh, if you wanna, if you get the application directly from FlatHub, you get the latest stable KDE applications. The updates are shipped directly to users, so there's no intermediate between us publishing an application and the users getting it. Uh, they're shipped in batch, so um, it's not like right after the build, they essentially batched into daily updates and users get daily updates of applications when we ship them. I won't go into too much details into how we do all of that. Um, there's another talk uh, this year that just happened yesterday uh, about that, uh, made by Albert, and goes into much more details about what Flatpak is, how we do things in Flathub, and etc. all of those things. So I recommend that you watch this one. So Flatpaks. Uh, Flatpaks, how do that, that actually enable us to uh, test changes? Uh, well, the idea is that uh, on Flathub, the workflow that is forced is the pull request workflow. So uh, you had you cannot just push changes. You had to make uh, you have to make pull request, uh, and it will build a test flat pack. So it will build your flat pack into a test repo and make that available to you. And you can install it on your system, try it out, make sure that it takes the actual uh, update or the things that you uh, were pushing in this pull request, uh, and then merge it so that it's made available to everybody. This makes it incredibly easy to text fixes on top of stable release. So if you have a small patch and uh, you uh, that fixes potentially an issue in one of the KD applications in stable release, uh, and you want to backport it to your to users, you can do that on Flat Hub really easy. Uh, and uh, just like it's shown here at the bottom, uh, if uh, there's uh, well, you don't see my pointer. Uh, there's at the bottom. There's the, the, the this section here from the, the, the comments uh, where you, you get the, 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 the flat pack build. Um, so let's do a quick demo and take a look at what it's like uh, for users, the experience uh, of getting a flat pack from FlatHub uh, from this pull request and install it on the system. So here we have a system and I've made a fake uh, test pull request for the uh, Grandview flat pack on FlatHub. So I made a small pull request where I did a small change uh, to correct some text in the user interface, uh, so that we show or we make sure that we show the recent cat folders, uh, cat pictures, or cat folders or folders of cat pictures. So I made a small patch here. I just added it to this pull request, and at the bottom of uh, this uh, here, I have got a build that has been made by the Flatpak infrastructure and I'm going to install it on my system. So right now I don't have this Flatpak installed, so I can copy paste this command, and this will install the Flatpak as a user. So there's two store for Flatpak, system one and the uh, user one, and here you can install that as a user. So there's no permission requested. Uh, so it's installing the test Flatpak uh, for Windview from Flathub, it downloads it, and then I can run it. Uh, so I use Flatpak run to get to run this Flatpak. And we're going to verify that the change has been applied. So if you see here on the left, we do have our recent cat folders for our cat pictures. So that's all good. And if we take a quick look at the version of the Flatpak, we can see that we are on the latest stable release of Gwenview uh, with the latest frameworks. So we're shipping the latest uh, 
uh, key the software to use this directly, and if you make text here, uh, it will be on top of those latest release, stable releases. If I run GwenView from directly my, uh, which is the one that is installed in my system, then it's, the change isn't there, of course, and if I look at the versions here, you can see that I'm not running the latest version, and I'm also running behind on one dot version for the key frameworks because on this system, uh, the uh, Fedora packages haven't catch up yet with the latest releases. So, as, as I said, we need to make sure that the users can be able to go back to the same people before. So, uh, here is how you install the flat pack that we've just installed, and once you reach the state, well, go back to the state you were before. Clean, uh, clean, clean plate, no changes, no uh, nothing. Go back to, to clean state. All right, so that's the transcript of this demo uh, for those watching the recording or if you want to try it yourself. So that's how we do things on FlatHub. How FlatHub uh, Flat enables us to let users test software and fixes uh, without them having to set up anything in the development environment, do compilation, do uh, setup, etc. They just get the flat pack from FlatHub directly from the infra, they test it, and they report success on GitHub. What we've been able to do as well is to do that with the GitLab CI infrastructure. So uh, we've uh, set up on invent.gd.org um, all we've added to the manifest that we are using to build Clapbacks. We've added them to the, to the key application repo. And that enables us to build all of those uh, manifests directly uh, on uh, in GitLab CI and build those Clapbacks here for every single merge request. So every single pull request that's happening there. So what GitLab CI does here, it creates a flatback bundle and it lets users test the change before the pull request gets merged. Exactly the same as on FlatHub, except here we're testing the latest, uh, uh, the latest software, the latest uh, builds directly from the Git tree. So this looks something like that. So if you look at the uh, pull request on uh, event, uh, you will find here pull request and on the right, you've got a small and download icon, and if the pipelines were successful, uh, you will find the Flatpak archive here, artifact uh, that you can download. So let's take a look at how this looks like at the workflow for users that want to test things. So same idea here, we go to this time kdm.org, which is the sources that we have. We go to a specific pull request, and here, if we look at the artifacts that we have for this pull request, we can so that the deploy phase path, the deploy phase is where the Flatpak archive is built. So we can download it. It will download a zip artifact that we can directly unzip and we'll find our Flatpak acquisition inside of it. So let's just go to my download folder. If I got the artifact here, I unzip it, I get a Flatpak bundle for Flatpak, and I install it directly on the command line using a small bundle switch, and it will, go, it will get the application directly from this bundle here that we've downloaded. So again, this is installing as users so that I don't touch application that are installed as system directly on my system. So let's run it to make sure that we're running actually something uh, from the Git repo, so here we have my cut pictures. And if I look at the version here of the application, we're definitely running a version from the Git repos and not something, uh, not the stable release. And we're still built on the same KDE framework, so uh, the uh, frameworks right now, which are part of the runtime backpack. And I can install my application just like I did for Previous one to go back to a state where I'm clean. After I place my, change, my changes, I can clean things up. All right, so that's done with. And now we can do more. So the advantage with Flatpak is that uh, you can the, the, the content of the of the Flatpaks 
is stored in an OS3 repo. So OS3 is kind of like big Git, but for uh, binary files, so for binary objects directly stored. So if you use Git, if you use Git for source code, it's for text files. It's not really great for binary files. And OS3 is basically Git, but for binary files, if you know sense. Uh, and all of the content of the binary files that are needed for an application to run uh, for a flat pack are stored in the an OS3 repo. That's why we get deduplication uh, on files, that why we get uh, less use of storage, etc. Uh, so this also enables us, just like Git has a log of the changes that you've made, uh, OS3 has a log of commits, a log of changes that you've made to the repo, and it lets us fetch previous builds of an application. So you can Using that, using that, you can fetch and get a previous version and do testing, like regression testing, or compute the behavior if you have something uh, that you think you don't know if that has been broken for one, two release, or if that's always been there. Uh, you can check it very easily this way without having to download packages, find all the versions, etc. This works with flat packs from FlatHub, so you need a noise repo, so the, 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 the ones that are stored on FlatHub use a noise repo. And sometimes uh, there's small warning here for some applications that use private uh, Qt uh, APIs, uh, you will also have to use the matching version of the runtime. So you might have to update the runtime to, to downgrade the runtime if you don't create an application. So let's give that a try uh, and see how we can dissect an application from Fathub. So okay, this time I'm going to pick Gwenview again and I'll, I'll directly install it from Fathub. So uh, you could do directly. And I'm going to explicitly install again on the user store so that I don't touch my application that may, may be installed as a system. So here, normal installation, I'm installing Greenview. And I'm going to look at the log of uh, version. Ah, no. First, I'm going to just run it to make sure that it's the uh, latest version. Here it is, it's the latest version that we have available in Flat Hat. So we get the latest version. Now, how will we go back to previous version? So I'm going to look at the log of uh, the builds of the version that we've pushed to FlatHub. So if I use this command here and look at the log of versions, I'm typing that less to make it more readable. And I've got kind of a git commit log. Uh, it looks a bit like the same uh, with all the titles of the PRs here that merge things. And if I pick one version, one older version, and I update my flight pack to this older version, so I kind of like a git checkout of an older version, I specify the commit here, and I update my application, I will update it back to a previous version of the application. So it's turning a little bit of things, and if I run the application again now, and I look at the version, here we go, we got dot one where we were dot three before. So we're back on an older release, and we can check things if there's a regression or something like that. Uh, maybe that fix uh, was actually applied or something like that. So if we want to go back, we can just re-update our system, and this is by default what Pathback will do. It will, if we go on an older application, we'll just update it. But sometimes we want to stay on an older application for whatever reason. Maybe there's a bug that in the newer version that hasn't been fixed, and you need the older version to stay there, and you can do that with the mask command. Here I'm masking the command, and if I try to update again, then Flatpak just ignores my application. I can list the masks uh, that are applied on my system with this command, and can also remove the mask to get the update again. Uh, so once the application is fixed, I can unmask it, and then boom, um, I'm back on the latest stable version of Gradview. So if I run the application again, I'm back on the release, the dot tree release. And as always, I can uninstall everything to make sure I go back to a perfectly clean state. All right, so that's all about KDE applications. That's how we make testing KDE applications much easier. Uh, and let's go now to uh, to the same thing. We're trying to do the same thing for the KDE Plasma desktop. And Plasma desktop can be packaged as a flat pack. We need something more heavier, more uh, involved, uh, because there's system applications, there's a lot more things to do there. Uh, so to do that, I'm 
re kind of reintroducing Fedora Kinoi. Fedora Kinoi have been I've introduced that system, that version of Fedora, uh, to Yosigana at Academy. And Fedora Kinoi essentially is a Fedora variant, which is built using the KDE Plasma desktop. It follows the latest KDE upstream releases. It's stable, uh, it's based on up-to-date software from Fedora, it's based on stable versions of Fedora, and it brings in all the nice changes from the ecosystem. So all the Wildman, PipeWire stuff, system user sessions, everything is there is enabled by default. Force. We have Wayland enabled by default. The difference with Fedora you know, is what we call an immutable desktop operating system. So it's not even immutable in the sense that you cannot change anything, it's immutable in the sense that you control how things get changed. You control all your system, you can change all your applications, or manage your data, uh, etc. It, and one thing that is immutable is that it doesn't touch your data. So system updates make sure to not touch data and they only touch the system. To make that work, we rely a lot on flat packs and containers, so it's very much a container focused desktop. So cloud cloud native, uh, call it cloud native desktops. So you can go full for more details on Fedora Kinoi in this presentation that I'm not going to redo, uh, but you can find all the details there. And one of the things that enables Fedora Kinoi is RPM OS3. So the idea is that we're shipping the system as a single consistent image, uh, and it brings with it atomic updates. So instead of having different packages that you update one by one, you update the system as a whole, as a whole image. It keeps everything uh, as is, all your data is untouched during system update, and your flat packs also stay as if they don't get touched during updates. And it also enables us to go back to a previous version. So if you know that you had, uh, if you know, if you find out that you have a bug in the latest version, you can go back to the previous one until it is fixed and uh, report it, investigate, etc. This enables us to have package diff, so as you have different versions of your operating system, you can also diff, find out the diff of packages between two versions. And uh, there's never a broken update. So it doesn't mean that your system will always update or there won't be bugs, but the idea is that uh, you will never end up in a state where your system is half updated. It's either updated or not updated, which makes it really uh, great um, for systems and really more predictable. So with Open 3 there's uh, has been a lot of changes recently happening in Open 3 around how we can make better use of containers to shape versions of the operating system. And so what we're doing is that we're making uh, the versions available as a container image. And instead of having to manage OS3 concepts or uh, things as OS3 specific, uh, you can directly use container native uh, tooling to manage versions of your operating system. So versions are just tags in, uh, in a container registry, and you can store all the versions directly in a container registry and pick out any version and rebase to it to test out changes, either updates or uh, .grades if you want to bisect the regression, for example. So let's do just that. We're going to rebase uh, to a container on Fedora Kinoite and see how this goes. So here I am, I'm running on Fedora Kinoite. And so if I look at the status of my system right now, I'm running a specific version, 0708. So from a couple of years, a couple of days ago, sorry. And if I go to the repository where we publish right now the builds and the, uh, the version of the containers uh, of Fedora Kinoite in this repo, we can see that there's a bunch of tags, which essentially we have one, build, we have builds daily. And so you can pick any builds and you will be able to fetch the version of the system from that day. So here I'm getting the full tag uh, and uh, URL for the specific version of the system, the specific criteria, and then I can directly use RPM history rebase to essentially move the entire, my entire desktop to the specific version of the system. All right, and so that's what's happening here, and it's going to pull that container image and replace the essentially rebase the existing system with the one from that container image. So I'm already running Kinoite and I'm putting Kinoite, so it's going to look very much the same. So it's a little bit loud here because it's the first time I pulled the image, and so it's downloading the whole operating system. Then it's creating a deployment, so essentially it's creating a new version of the system, and we're good, and then here we go. We have the diff of packages, so that's the packages that have been updated into the new image. And so here, for example, I can test that the update to NSS isn't breaking my applications on my system. And to apply the system, we need to reboot uh, because these changes are not happening live. Uh, we have to reboot the system. So stopping the recording, 
rebooted the system, and here we go. If I look back at the status of my system, here we go. We have two versions, the, dot, uh, the 07, 010, uh, 07, 10 version, which is from, that we got from the registry. We can look at the different packages between two versions. And uh, yeah, then we can roll, do our testing here at this point. Uh, then uh, if we want to go back to the previous version, we can always roll back. This will move the new version, the current version that we have down into the boot menu. So we'll boot the next version that will boot the previous one that we had, the 07 or 08, so we, where we started from. And that's it. So I'm going to let's stop the recording again, do a reboot. Here's reboot. Ah, stopping the recording. Hey, we're recording, and then we're back. And when we're back, we can see the status of the system, and we can clean up everything to get back to the state where we have nothing wrong before. Up. And that's about it. All right. And so, what you might you be wondering is that, hey, I want this for Plasma 6, because this is what's happening right now, and this is what we've been working on. So, we've made Fedora can write beta and nightly versions uh, based on stable Fedora with beta and nightly key packages. And we've been pushing those versions to uh, container uh, registry. We are working on Plasma 6 images uh, of that. Uh, so this is actually in progress. We had hoped that to have that ready for Academy, but unfortunately we don't have that right now, but we're going to make that happen as soon as possible on top of stable Fedora. Right now, the KDE beta, beta and IT builds are, are posed because we're working on Plasma 6, uh, but there's a whole lot of things that we could do with that, with those meshes, and uh, enable pre-match checks for the key uh, desktop, uh, using, for example, OpenQA that would have to be set up. There's likely too much overhead uh, for single peers uh, of doing the whole build of the system and testing, but potentially if we had of that, we could set up daily or weekly checks. Uh, and one thing that would help here is potentially building the RPMs, the spec files, uh, bundling the spec files into the repos and doing the package builds directly in CI, because Kinoite still relies on packages. It's an image, but it's built out of packages. And so, yeah, that's all the potential thing that we're looking at to make this easier for testing. And uh, with that, I'll stop here and uh, go for questions. And here's the list of all the teams and all the very nice people who are helping me to actually do that because it's not a one-man effort. It's really a team effort, uh, either in Fedora or in, in PD, uh, in FlatHub, and all the bases. So thank you very much. Questions? Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, if you want to ask final questions, obviously I'm not in the room, so make sure to make them uh, on the chat and I can uh, answer the question in the chat. So, the question Can one integrate usability testing with Selenium from Fatpacks? Um, I don't know. Uh, this is a good question. I just saw the talk about Selenium from Harold and uh, I don't know, but that be great. That would be really great. We would have per PR testing uh, uh, using flat packs. Uh, yeah, that, that would be really great. I don't know if that's possible. Usually, uh, flat packs should be accessible. Um, so hopefully that should work. But I've not tested it. All right. I think I'm at time. If I'm correct, I don't know. We've still got five minutes. My God. Are there any more questions in the room that I should relate to, uh, Dimitri? So yes, I still have a couple of minutes. I'm going to just share these two last slide. Uh, is if you're interested in doing development on Fedora Kinoid, I also wrote a post on my blog about that. So all of this here is about testing, about testing flat packs, testing mm -hmm. packages. Uh, but sometimes you want to work also as well on the system. So if you want to do KD development on Kinoid, you can do that. Uh, with uh, all these restrictions are here in this. Uh, blog post, uh, you can set up things uh, so that you can work on flat packs, so yeah, you can work on RPMs and uh, do changes live to your system without having to, uh, to be like stuck from the immutable faction of the operating system. There's, whole, uh, there's a lot of options to make your system uh, hackable uh, back, essentially, uh, even though you're running on an immutable system, so uh, this is definitely possible. Could yeah, I just wanted to know the, like, the timeline. Deploying uh, uniform setup, like computer lab. Yes, uh, if you want to set up a fleet of exact versions uh, using Fedora Kinoid, it's very easy. Uh, it makes it very easy because you ensure that everybody has the same thing. Uh, you can also use OS3 uh, to make sure that the configuration is the same on all the systems. So um, verify that the configuration is the same. But by default, with Fedora Kinoid, you will everybody will get the same bits. So the same packages. 
uh, install the version of the system. So he cannot hear you. I need to relay your Yeah, questions. just really quick. I wanted to know how, what's the timeline to release uh, the uh, Kinoite version with Plasma 6 to, for testing. Let's see if he sees it. I think not, but... Uh. Uh, okay, one question. What's the timeline to release for Kinoite with Plasma 6 for testing? Uh, we don't really have a timeline right now, uh, but we are actively working on it. Uh, we need to set up all the pieces for the dependencies on Qt6. So we're setting up all the Qt6 dependencies in Fedora, on the upstream, uh, etc. the dependencies. Uh, and so once we have all the bits set up uh, on stable Fedora, uh, then we'll likely uh, take a comment of the frameworks and package all of that. So we need to make Patches all of those versions to be able to ship all that. Uh, we we'll still have in preview packages, but we need something clean to be able to package that uh, using QI. And so, yeah, hopefully that will happen soon. One thing that would help us potentially is have um, kind of an alpha release of the frameworks uh, so that we can target a specific version at just at the starting uh, that will help us uh, get this default started. All right, then thank you so much, everyone. We will have a break and then we will go into lightning talks here.